in the Smugglers Room, we're starting another epic build project to keep you inspired and motivated. Because in the Smugglers Room, this is the way, and that's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to the Smugglers Room. This week, this chubby geek is starting a project we have been planning for over a year and thinking about for longer than that. With all the recent shipping delays that we've had considering everything that's going on in the world, this is the perfect time to finalize our plans and our designs for not one, but two Mandalorian projects that we aim to have completed and ready, hopefully for Star Wars Celebration in August. That's right, both Carissa and I will be tag teaming this amazing build and taking you through each step along the way. So in this first episode of our Mandalorian build project, we are going to start with the planning and design. And there are plenty of resources out there for you. And we're gonna start with the Mandalorian Mercs. The Mandalorian Mercs is a wealth of information for you. And if you wanna be part of that community, then you'll wanna research that intensely. There are a lot of guidelines and different things that they have provided for you before you start this journey. Their website is full of information and break down all the costume requirements, which they've conveniently separated out for you. You can explore the various aspects of your build and determine what is approved by the group and what is not. Further, it is here that you'll discover what materials are approved to be included in your project as well. This is important for all you EVA foam smiths out there, as EVA foam is not allowed as a primary source of your armor, for example. Another great place for research is the Dented Helmet. This was one of the first forums we joined and the members were an invaluable resource during our budget Boba Fett build. We found helpful files, friendly makers, and all the inspiration we could ask for. And finally, you cannot go wrong by becoming a member of the Replica Prop Forum. This has been and is still one of my favorite places on the internet. So many great fans and builders can be found on the RPF. And if you spend a little bit of time there, you can typically get answers to just about any question. Now, before we take you through the nitty gritty of our design process, I will say we are probably not going to follow all the guidelines of the Mandalorian Mercs, specifically as it pertains to using EVA foam as that's what we want to use for our armor and other parts of our costume. It's not at all that we wouldn't want to be part of that group. It's just that we tend to be not so screen accurate around here. That said, during this process, we are going to point out as many of the guidelines as we can and be sure to point out anywhere we deviate from them along the way. Hopefully this series then will become an asset to you when you build your Mandalorian costume. With a project of this size, you have to plan. This consists of lots of lists. Lists of lists followed by reference. And I'm not gonna lie to you, my friends, Pinterest can be your best friend. Honestly, for me, Pinterest is my go-to for accumulating and collecting reference for so many of my projects. So this is our workspace for Mandalorian project, at least the parts that I'll be working on. But we're gonna get started concepting and we're gonna figure out how we want to build our Mandalorian. Carissa has had a long 20 plus year in interior design and architecture. And within that industry, she was accustomed to building concept boards for projects. This helps with visual reference while working through a project. A concept board is super cool and it allows you to assemble various reference in one place. For example, we might find helmet designs that each have a little something we like or armor from a build that has details that we want to include in ours. 
Then there's fabric, textures, layers, leather parts for belts and holsters, their weapon choices to consider, and so much more. These boards will be our guide, and they can and will likely evolve throughout the build as large as this one. So now we're going to take these concepts and figure out how to bring them all together to create our own compilation of all these different parts and pieces. And we're going to sketch it out to start getting an idea of how to layer these on and which direction to take first. Now, you may have noticed a couple things during these sketches. Namely, that we're not going to create these characters as human Mandalorians. Nope, we're going with the Twi'lek or Twi'lek, however you prefer to pronounce it. You know, those crazy characters you often see in Star Wars, and they're very often dancers for villains like Jabba the Hutt. And no, before you ask, you won't see this chubby geek in a slinky outfit dancing to the beat of Fergan Dan and the modal nodes. But my lovely wife thought these would be a fun character to create as a bounty hunter, so I'm along for the ride. Personally, I think it's a unique design, not one that I've seen too many times in a Mandalorian costume. So we're going for it. Should make the design of the helmet interesting, if nothing else. First we have a poly cotton that's kind of a canvas material that'll be the base of our costume, the flight suit. A nice stretchy material we thought would be fun to use for our flak vests. Pre-quilted material for the camas and loincloths. Our wampa skin. Different leathers, unfinished leather, so we'll probably have to try dyeing some leather, which neither of us have done. Now, in case you missed it, that's right, we're going with Wampa Hide on our shoulders. We wanted to create a little backstory on these characters for this build, and we're going to be sharing that story with you as the series progresses. And I'll tell you, I'm really looking forward to making some Wampa horns and teeth as little bits of trophy to add to these costumes. Now, if I can, I would just like to take a moment to thank all of the amazing Patreon members that are supporting us. I can't tell you how much we appreciate your contribution to what we're doing. You have no idea the impact you're making in allowing us to keep bringing content to you every single week. We could not do this without you. Thank you so much.
We totally realize this isn't a full build video this week, but we really thought there was some value in sharing how we are thinking through and planning two massive costume builds with you. There are going to be a lot of moving parts with this build, both his and hers. We have helmets and armor to make, weapons to design and build, gauntlets, jetpacks, and layers upon layers of custom fabric. And we haven't even touched the electronics we'll be adding and needing for these guys. It's going to be crazy, and we only have about four and a half months to get these completely built and ready to go to Star Wars Celebration in August. We really hope there's some value in this episode today, and we just received word that there is a shipment on its way with some goodies for the next part of the room build, and we'll get right back on that, as well as uh, that project sitting right behind the camera over there that you're gonna love. It's crazy. I know, you're on lockdown, the world is a bit scary right now, so we're doing whatever we can to bring you a little bit of entertainment and value. So, maybe do some research, Put some reference together and build your own concept board for whatever project it is, costume or otherwise. I bet you'll be surprised how enjoyable that process actually is. And I guarantee you're going to find interesting things that you want to add to your project and maybe even a different way of looking at it. Now, I'm going to go practice my Twi'lek dancing because if I suck at bounty hunting, maybe I'd be all right at booty dancing. Or maybe I'd just better off building something out of nothing. Oops, let's try that again. Fabric for the canvas and the, yep. See, you gotta have the Baby Yoda. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be weird. <laughs> 